Welcome to online worship for Broadway and Port Colden United Methodist Churches. My name is Pastor Catherine, and I greet you from wherever you are joining us from this day. Today, on the fourth Sunday of Advent, December 18th, we are exploring the idea of love made possible this day and in this season. So I invite you to open yourself up to how God might be speaking and to allow God to move in our time together. I invite you now to join with me in our call to worship. The words will be on the screen. Your responses are in bold. Come, worship our God who communicates in many ways. Creator, we are ready to listen. God guides us through scripture, dreams, and conscience. Jesus, we are ready to listen. As God spoke in ages past, God speaks still. Spirit, we are ready to listen. God, as we focus on you, fill us with love. Let us continue our time in song. Our scripture today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 7. Hear now the word of God. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David. It is not enough to try the patience of humans. Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel. He will be eating curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. For before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, The land of the two kings you dread will be laid to waste. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you join with me in our Advent candle lighting? If you have an Advent wreath at home, I invite you to uh, bring it with you as we enter into this time. Let us light our candles together. Thank you. 
Can you imagine the strength of love that it took for Joseph to believe Mary, to not end their engagement and to love both her and Jesus as deeply as he did? Can you imagine how deeply God loves us that God gave us the gift of God's very own self here on earth? Can you imagine the depth of love that God has for us as God seeks to meet us wherever we are and as God forgives us of all the things we don't even know how to forgive ourselves for? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love indeed does God have for us, for you. Today we light our fourth candle in our journey to Emmanuel's birth. Today we light the candle of love, for without God's deep and unconditional love for us, peace, hope, and joy would be impossible. But we are reminded that through God, who is love, all things are possible. Let us pray. Caring one, in our doubts and fears, you claim us as beloved. When life feels heavy, you meet us where we are. Lord, help us to be bearers of your love in the world by affirming the worth of others. Inspire us to trust in what is possible, dwelling in each of us. May love be our guide. Amen. I must admit, I am sentimental, overly so at times. I hold on to things that don't work or serve my lifestyle because of the memories attached to them. I hold on to random things, odd knickknacks because of what they represent. And I always have the best plan of what I'm going to do to save and memorialize some of these things. But recently, I had to face a hard truth. There's just too much stuff. So over the last few weeks, I have begun to cull through the stuff, digitizing documents when necessary, just throwing things out on the other hand, snapping photos to keep the memory of some things, and really struggling to let go more than anything. 
This struggle has only intensified with the arrival of school artwork each week. And let me tell you, I didn't realize how many projects would come home in preschool. But I know deep inside, our family and our home is better with less things, less clutter. And logically, this shouldn't be such a hard endeavor, but emotions keep getting in the way. I've been thinking about this uh, same thing, the same thought as I've reflected on Advent and the season of Advent and what uh, it calls us to. Because this year we have proclaimed each week that God makes the things, takes the things we deem as impossible and makes a way, making them possible. We have explored the words of the prophet Isaiah that declare a time to come where hope, peace, joy, and love reign above all else. Yet we find that, or maybe I'm just finding that, living into the possibility of hope, peace, joy, and love are not as simple as they seem. Chaos, violence, fear make it harder to trust in and rely on God's way. Anger and hatred limit our vision of what could be. But at its heart, this season of Advent calls us to seek out divine possibility, to seek out God's abiding love at work, to live into the promise that God is with us in whatever is going on. Again, the, wor- the Lord spoke to Ahaz. <clears throat> Our scripture today begins in the middle of a story that is already underway. Ahaz is the king of Judah, which is the southern kingdom, part of the formerly unified kingdom that was divided after Solomon's death. The northern kingdom, or the kingdom of Israel, and Aram, a non-Israelite kingdom, are forming an alliance to attack Judah, to attack the southern kingdom, because they refuse to join in their rebellion over the power-hungry Assyrian Empire. Their plan, the plan of Israel and Aram, is to gain control of Jerusalem, replace Ahaz with a new king who will join with them, and go on and attack Assyria. Can you imagine the dread and fear that is being held by the people of Judah and their king, knowing that all of this is in the works? And so the prophet Isaiah is called to enter into this chaos of international politics and offer words of guidance and hope. But Ahaz responds with unbelief. See, in the earlier verses of chapter 7, we find Isaiah telling Ahaz that these two kings are smoldering stumps, that God has already decreed against their plan, and that the Lord reveals to Ahaz that Israel has embarked on a path of its own destruction to its own destruction. And so the question that arises for him is this, what path will the king of Judah choose? And so Isaiah offers a prophetic solution. If you want to see your kingdom stand, if you crave a descendant on the throne of Judah, one thing only is needed. Believe. And this is where we have entered today. God has called Ahaz to believe. And then offers these words. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. In this moment of of, of possibility, on this cusp of what could be, Ahaz is invited to ask God anything about anything, whether whatever you can imagine, God can answer and reveal to you. That is what is being offered to Ahaz. Yet he says, no, he says, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. 
And this answer sounds righteous. It sounds correct. But truly, it was a foolish answer. He said the right thing, but the heart behind it was wrong. Ahaz and the people of Judah need God's help. They need divine intervention. They need divine intervention to succeed. What we find in Second Kings is the reason for his refusal. Because Ahaz has already sent, uh, he has a plan and doesn't want to believe in God. He's already sent a petition to the Assyrian's king, declaring himself the king's slave and asking the king to save him, to save him and the people of Judah from the threat posed by Israel and Aram. Because it is easier to sell himself to this violent empire than it is to wait for salvation from God. It is easier to sell himself to Assyria, to give up his power, to give up his kingdom, than to wait for God's salvation, to wait for God's timing. But God... Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. God promises a sign to Judah that a virgin will give birth and call the child Emmanuel and that the enemy nations will be desolate before the child knows good from evil. Emmanuel, God with us. This name would have been radical for the ancient hearers, even though it is rather commonplace for us today, because this name reveals the persistence of our gods, God's desire to be an intimate relationship with humanity. This name, Emmanuel, reminds us that our God is one of unconditional love. This name is evident that God knows what we need to overcome the trials of this life and will give any sign to help us believe, any sign to help us live. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. <laughs> The promised child told by the prophet Isaiah is present in the personhood of Jesus, love made possible. And while Luke focuses on Mary and her interaction with the angel of the Lord, this account found in the gospel of Matthew chooses Joseph. Matthew describes Joseph's love and care for Mary as he overcomes his own anxiety about what to do. Comfort and assurance are an expression of love in this moment. And so we find that God with us is the ultimate expression of God's comfort and assurance, God's abiding love for us, love made possible. 
So today, beloved, we are being invited to look more closely for God at work in the world, to notice where God's love is showing up, to consider where you have seen or experienced God's love for you this Advent season, to consider where can you be a sign of God's love to someone else, to reflect, to begin to reflect on Emmanuel in the world through the works of our own hands and feet. And so as a community of faith, we are called in this season and beyond it to be a sign of God's hope, God's peace, God's joy, God's love in the world. But how? This year in our congregations, we are committing with our Christmas offerings, a separate offering we collect during this time of year, to support the needs of our community. In conversation with neighbors, in conversation with uh, school leaders and other community leaders, it's clear that many among us have lack. It is our hope that in times of unexpected, and especially in this season of inflation, of uncertainty, of all of the things, it is our hope that we can step in by reflecting God's care in some small way through your generosity with time, talents, gifts, service, and witness in this place, we are able to make a difference, a long-term difference in our corner of the world. Through your generosity, we have been able to help build God's kingdom and continue to build God's kingdom here by intentional care and love. And so if nothing else, this day, we hear this. Jesus gives us the possibility of love in a way that is beyond what we can do on our own. Divine possibility. God with us. Emmanuel. So may this possibility be our guide and may we be the better for it. Amen. The radical love of God enabled Joseph and Mary to take risks for love's sake, risks that brought Jesus into the world. We have been invited 
this season, and we are being invited today to take the risky step of extravagant love as we offer up all that we have so that the world can know Jesus more and more. So this is our hope that God would be at work in our world, within us, through us, and in spite of us. So as you go into this day and into this week and into this world, may you know that God is up to something. As you go into this day, into this week, and into this world, may all you do uh, reflect God's love and grace. As you go into this day, and into this week, and into this world, may you experience abundant love, unwavering love, unconditional love through the works of God in this world. So may you go as you are. May you go in peace. And may God go with you in all that you do. Amen.